Okay, welcome to the very first uh, 311 Griffin video uh, that we're going to try to do. 311 Griffins, I should say. Um, this video, I'm actually just kind of trying out uh, Fraps. I just got it. <coughs> Excuse me. Just got it, and um, I'm going to try some stuff out here. Um, we're actually, well, let's just get into it here starting off pretty high because I'm going to do an APU restart and uh, following that I'm going to do a uh, windmill restart which is my favorite. The APU I'm not very good at. Um, real quick let's uh, check out the skin here. This is the newly created. Uh, it needs, needs a little bit of work still but um, newly created 311 Griffins skin. Not very practical in real life um, this would probably have a lower survival rate in real combat than a, a uh, typically colored A-10. But it's kind of cool. This is a multicam pattern, actually. And in case people don't know, this is the uh, this is uh, m maybe not the best camo out there, but it um, it's the camo I've adopted for personal use when hunting and camping and paintballing and things like that. Anyway. Uh, people probably don't really care about that so much. But, okay, so we're going to do the APU restart first, and this can be found in the manual. Um, it, the emergency procedures start on, I believe, page 579, and like I said, I'm not insanely good at this, but um, the basic idea is you're going to have an engine die, and with the APU start, you're going to uh, need to be below 20,000 feet. Um, so, so you come down below 20,000 feet and you gain airspeed, set your other throttle to max. I don't know why it never puts them on max when I start a mission. Probably because I don't have it syncing to my real HOTAS controls, I guess. Um, <clears throat> but you're going to want to be below 20,000 feet. And then you are going to um, eventually get below 15,000 feet, and you're going to uh, crank up your APU uh, right here, and um, let it spool up, and uh, then you are going to motor, you're going to motor the engine that is uh, stopped, so that's back on these, I don't know which way you click it, because I've got the... Uh, Thrustmaster Warthog, so I just flip the switch on that. And um, once you've motored that and uh, your APU spooled up, you set your affected engine to idle, and then you turn that motor back to normal operating. And uh, you, it takes a little patience, but um, I usually get impatient. I think that's why I fail to uh, get it restarted. All right, anyway, let's go ahead and kill this left engine. go. And we're going to try to trim this out a little bit. Get the master caution. I'm going to shut that up for now. It may come on again. We're going to go ahead and kind of dive. Um, you want your inner stage turbine temp right here to be below 100 Celsius before you start the engine cycle, I believe. So the engine start cycle. So I don't really pay too much attention to that. I'm going to go ahead and kick up my APU. And there it goes. And I'm going to start motoring the left engine. There we go. Now I'm not for sure what motoring the left engine does, but I know like if you have a failed start, you want to motor it to get the fuel out uh, so you don't have a hot start. So maybe that's what it's doing. Um, close to 100C. APU's powered up. I'm going to go ahead and uh, this is where I start getting impatient, but um, I've got plenty of altitude, but I'm going to go ahead and kick that to idle. And we got this engine start sequence. I'm going to kick that up to normal. And we're just going to watch that, that gauge. And hopefully pretty soon we get a engine start. Earlier I had to set it to motor again. See you 
movement. Maybe because I'm not letting the APU quite get started up. So, so motor that a little bit more. There we go. Sometimes, uh, for some reason, the last both times I've had to set it back to off and then to idle. So I don't know if there's something backwards that I'm doing. But all right, we've got engine start. Kick that up. Kill the APU. We're good to go. Now that took way more altitude than it did last time. Uh, the first time I did it, uh, I think it took about 5,000 feet. Now we're going to climb back up above 10,000 feet because the windmill restart really does take, uh, they both can take a lot, but the, I believe they say it can take between four and 10,000 feet, if I remember right, in the manual. Um, I definitely want to be above 10,000 feet. Getting way out here in the ocean. I guess there could be worse places to practice engine restarts. Um, this A10C is pretty pretty cool. I'm not usually for uh, frustrating and very um, uh, frustrating games and games that can be a little bit hard to learn, but this one has proven to be not too hard to learn, and I still enjoy doing the um, engine startup sequence and things like that. It, it's it's a pretty cool game. I was really surprised. Of course. I did uh, break down and buy the uh, used Thrustmaster Warthog and Satek Pro Combat uh, or Combat pedals off of eBay, and then I was using Face Track No IR, but I started using uh, Track IR. I, I, I got that just because I got a little bit tired of fidgeting with Face Track No IR. I wear glasses, and Face Track No IR isn't really built to um, detect glasses. So, okay, for this windmill restart, what we're going to need to use is um, the bleed air switch right there. We're going to turn it off and we're going to set the cross speed to on whenever we kill this engine. And we're going to kill the right engine this time. Alright, so uh, real quick rundown. Um, you kill it, put, make sure your other throttle's at max. You go into, a, they say, a 30 degree dive. I've gone into shallower dives and got it to work. Set the cross feed to off or I'm sorry, bleed air to off, cross feed to on, and you wait for it to cool down to below uh, 150 degrees C, I believe, in that engine, and then you set the um, you set it to idle, and then you put this up at ignite, and you have to hold it there, I believe. I don't know if you click it, if you have to hold it or not, but um, on the Thrustmaster you do. Okay, so we're killing right engine now. There it goes. Should get a warning. Go ahead. Yep, it didn't want to stay. I'm going to try to trim this out a little bit so that I can not worry about rolling over. There we go. Lead air off. Cross feed on. Alright, we're going to go into our dive. Try to shut that up again. Go into our dive. Keep an eye on your altimeter. I have had this take long enough that I had to level off. <laughs> Alright, we're cooling down pretty good. Alright, set it to idle. And I'm going to hold the ignite button. Pull so up, we, pull up. we are coming down fast. But we've got engine start. Watch our speed. Okay, I'm going to go ahead, turn my cross feed back off, turn my bleed air back on, and go full throttle. That took a lot of altitude. And then we're going to trim it back out because we have both engines now. I love the trim on the uh, Hotas joystick. It's awesome.
All right. Well, I think that's it for this video. I don't want to get it too long or anything. And like I said, this is the first video I've made, so uh, I hope that helps people learn one of the cool features that's modeled in the um, DCS uh, A10C. All right. And thanks for watching.